Hi, this is Brother Richard, <laughs> and today we're continuing our lesson series, Autotokus <coughs> Mystery, this will be part 262, the beginning of sorrows, and we're continuing, it. this will be part 5 of the series. We want to compare scripture dealing with events that are going to take place <clears throat> at the time of the judgment is going to fall. And we find that there are prophecies that link uh, specific occurrences which give a, a clear comprehension of uh, the reality of what's being spoken. The scripture indicates the beginning of sorrows will start as a judgment spoken in anger against the human race. Yes. Jeremiah 25, verse 30. Thank you for the picture. <clears throat> Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words. Say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout, as they that tread, against all the inhabitants of the earth. It's going to be a judgment pronounced against the whole human race. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture indicates this judgment will come suddenly in which everyone will know no. the Lord is judging them. Ezekiel 7 verses 8 to 9. <laughs> I'm chuckling because I realize this deals with all the pretenders. <laughs> yes. You'll be, you be able to play games here. Indeed. Now I will shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways, <clears throat> and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense those according to thy way thine abominations that are in the midst of thee and ye shall know ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth and I put in parentheses you so he's going to make sure in no uncertain terms they know what's coming about to take place why it's about to take place and who is <coughs> the uh, uh, originator of what's about to take place do they learn at the same time what they can do to get out of this uh, impending doom. To mitigate? Mm. Or to, no, to hide from. Well, in this respect, it's going to be custom designed. Each individual. Some, there's not going to be, you, you've done it. You've it's too late. It. That's okay. it for okay. you. Others, Judgment mitigated with mercy, depending you, upon the individual. Do you believe that those who suffer from Jeremiah 23, 1 to 2, the pastors, are in the group which it cannot be mitigated? Yes. Because the word evil is used, it's, it's very clear that he's, he's had it. Yes, he's, he's had oh, enough. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, they're the, the focus, oh, the main yeah. focus. Okay. <clears throat> So everybody knows what's taking place. There is not going to be any doubt in anybody's mind. <clears throat> Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture indicates after the pronouncement, after the pronouncement, violence will immediately break out everywhere <coughs> in the world, and it'll start with ethnic groups. So the judgment is going to be tailor-made. It's not going to be just one judgment. It's going to be 
a judgment which sets in motion other judgments. So, in the localized judgment, by localized I'm talking about those nations arrayed against Israel, we see different nations being dealt with in slightly different ways. I mean, they, they all get it in the end, of course, but slightly different ways. When we look at the globalized judgment, um, ethnicity against ethnicity, for example, is it the same thing? Does, does different ethnicities have slightly different judgments? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Number, the key here is I'm going to judge you according to your ways. Okay. okay. So the individual, in a sense, is going to be the one that responsible for the judgment that falls on him. An example would be, <coughs> we can see that those in the West clearly have separated from the Lord much further than those in the Middle East. Now, I know you're going to say that you know, they're not all in line with my trees. I get that. But we see that the adherence to moral behavior is stronger in the Middle East than it is in Iceland, for example. And that's where I'm coming from when I'm asking that question. Yes, again, the judgment is tailor-made to the, the punishment fits the crime. Right. But the thing of it is, is he's adding mercy in that as well. And that's interesting how you see what you just now spoke out. Yeah. You would hope, you would pray that the mercy would be directed on this country that we're in. You would hope. <laughs> so then, based on what he says, this raises another question. Mm -hmm. Could the prayers of righteous men in this country, bearing in mind that this is the last bastion of Christendom, affect the level and the intensity of the judgment coming across the four corners of this land? I would say yes, yes. Okay. The prayers of a righteous man avail it much. All right. And in a, in, a, in a way, it may have been the prayers that mitigate the right, judgment. Right, right, right. But let's go on. We said after the pronouncement, violence would immediately break out. Jeremiah 25, 32. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. So, <clears throat> immediately the judgment sets in on the ethnic groups, right. on a global <clears throat> scale. <clears throat> I take it that each group collectively is so immersed in its own judgment and what that means for them that they don't necessarily pay attention to what judgment or what difficulties that other groups oh, are going no. to. Oh, by no means. They're going to be caught up in trying to uh, deal with their own problems. Every individual. Yeah. They're not going to have time for any objective evaluation of anything. Mm. So literally what's happening here, Mr. Jones, is... <coughs> As, as you keep saying, individually, mm. the Lord is pronouncing judgment, and individually, we are being delivered a package that is precisely, exactly custom-made for each one of us, depending on the state on that you're yes. in. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> uh, so, you know, everybody's going through something, but everything is custom-designed per person. Yes. Turn to Zephaniah, third chapter. There it is. <laughs> Are you going to also include Zephaniah chapter 2? Uh, as we have time. Excellent, because we need to hear the decree. <laughs> yes. Zephaniah 3rd chapter, verse 8. Excuse Bless you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I raise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms. 
to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Now the word jealousy there uh, <coughs> also has a rendering zeal. Zeal. What it's basically referring to is the zeal to have his name feared and respected. Mm -hmm. They have so put forth detestations, disrespect, um, total lack of recognizing who he is. That this is part of the rage and the anger of the judges before them. Yeah. Don't let them know who's boss. Yeah. This this verse fits perfectly with um, the father saying to the son, "Sit at my right hand until I make your your servant." That that makes sense. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. Let's go on. <clears throat> so you're going to have twofold judgment here. It starts with the nations. Ezekiel 7, verses 10 to 11. <clears throat> Behold the day. It's going to start on one day. Behold the day, behold it is come. The morning is gone forth. The rod hath blossomed, pride hath budded. So it's going to be a normal, average, everyday dawning, if you will. People are going about their business. And all of a sudden, violence is going to break out among people. The pride budding, is that the pride of the nations, of the people? in their everyday business. It's demonic incitation. Okay. <clears throat> everyday activities taking place. You're walking down the street, focusing on something. You happen to brush up against somebody. He pulls out a gun and shoots you. Mm -hmm. Another guy <clears throat> driving in his car swerves, goes back, crashes into another car. That's today. So that's today. Yes. Yeah. 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 Demonic incitation yes. on an unprecedented scale among men. But the use of the word pride, should we understand that this is used to denote or connote the Luciferians believing they can get away with something. No, it's talking about the individual. You dissed me. Bang. Okay, okay. Now I get it. <laughs> Took a moment. Yes. All right. Half budded. What does that mean? Blossom. Manifested. Opened up. Made it Pride. Half budded. budded. Okay. It, it's an often an average day. Right. Nothing un unusual. All of a sudden, people pride begins to well up unprecedented uh, responses to in, 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 in insignificant okay. slights okay. that they perceive okay. to be he's talking about violence right so literally it becomes all of a sudden everybody owes me I am in charge I, I am the, the, the master of my universe I am somebody that I've not been recognized to be. In an incident of everyday life, you're going to immediately experience rage because you feel you have been slighted. Right. A one okay. of a million different ways. Okay. You stepped on my toes. You looked uh, at me. You're... you're your dog walked across my lawn. Right. Okay. You uh, got the nerve, you mitigated gall. What did you say to me? Right, right. All blown out of proportion. Everybody's pride 
is going to be incited. Right. No humility, because it's peace and humility, and violence is pride. Okay. Okay. It's going to boil over to the point where everybody is going to be seeking everybody else's throat. Right. So that incitement then, the pride uh, budding we see, is the noise we hear from the demons being released. Well, the noise is first, and then you're going to see, or the sound is the right. The sound, you're going to see yes. The result of it. yes. If that happens on a day like today, we're together, but all of a sudden, I'm going to notice something's wrong with you guys, or you guys are going to see something's wrong with me, or are we going to immediately know to fight it, Jonesy? You're not even going to be there. <laughs> You're not going to be there. Because you'll know before it happens. <laughs> Safe place to be. The Holy Spirit is going to direct. But what is the result of it? Turn back to Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25. What's the result of this? 32 to 33. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. And the slain of the Lord shall be in that day right. from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. They get killing each other off. Right. Right there and there. So would you see this as one moment, literally at one moment, people are walking around as they are today, now, and then within you know, seconds or a minute, everyone's stabbing each you other. You hear the noise, and everybody's at everybody's throat. Uh, you're talking about the Lord's voice? Yeah. The Lord makes a pronouncement, everybody knows what time it is. You're right. Then all hell breaks loose. <clears throat> this is just the beginning. Right. Out of control. Nobody's going to be able to stop this, shut it down, or even understand it because sure. nobody's going to be able to see it from an objective perspective. They haven't been following and studying these things, so of course not. Yeah. Right, let's go. Then, turn, now turn to Matthew 24. Verse 7. Nation shall rise against nation. We went into that judgment. End, end, end. Kingdom against kingdom. God's going to destroy all the governments of the earth. <clears throat> this is separate judgment. Wars going to break out between nation states. Will it look like a separate judgment to people on the ground? <laughs> they won't be able they to won't be thinking about it. No. Yeah. All right. They won't have a clue. They just are going to be responding to Whatever. what's taking yeah. place. Nations are rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence, earthquakes and diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Turn back to Zephaniah. Third chapter. You know, we, we, we're going to reach a time here where we're going to need more time for you to understand these studies because the little time that we have now doesn't do it justice. Because there's so much I want to give you, I have to keep skipping over stuff. If you're able to add more days or hours, we're ready. Uh, 
if you if you wish, add more days or hours. We're ready. I'm well. I've been ready, but we, you know, we have other commitments. Seven nine, third chapter, verse eight again. Verse eight again. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination, my determination is to gather the nations, we just read that, that, that I may assemble the kingdoms, governments, to pour upon them right. my indignation, even my fierce anger. So he's going to take down every human government on the face of the earth. Turn to um, Jeremiah. Back to Jeremiah 25. Verse 26. kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms, all the kingdoms of the world which are upon the face of the earth, and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. So he's going to go after the governments after judgment falls on the people. Right. Now, Ezekiel, seventh chapter. Verse 15. The sword is without. Well, now let's do verse 14 and 15. I'll give you a better picture. They have blown the trumpet, even to make all ready, but none goeth to the battle. For my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. In other words, the country's being invaded. Yes. They're trying to rally the army to defend <coughs> the, uh, the, the country. The southern border. Yeah. It's <laughs> you know, being uh, totally occupied by enemy nations. Well, what you have here, ethnic strife. Nobody is in a position to do anything. Because everybody's at everybody's throat. This thing is just going to collapse. Sure. Jonathan, it sounds like the Tower of Babel or the confusion of the languages. All of a sudden, nobody knows what nobody else is talking about. It's a, a complete separation of all the multitudes. Well, in, in, in that sense, yes, but it goes beyond that. Because at least at the Tower of Babel, you have confusion. What you have here is interesting destruction of a society. Everybody is against everybody else. Nobody's willing to cooperate. <clears throat> the Father has set in motion the collapse of the organized religious, economic, social, political order <clears throat> that constitutes the Luciferian illusion that we consider life here. Every aspect of society is under judgment. Political, religious, social, you name it, it's under a judgment. It's not going to function. I saw a video of Eritrean and Ethiopian immigrants in Paris fighting each other. Sure. Oh, they were at each other's throats. For, right. Insane. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Outside of this group right here, Mr. Jones, it sounds like our brothers in that building over there and one and one day they're just going to be against this. Sure. Stay ready, you. Sure. Everybody is going to be down on everybody else. Yeah. But again, turn to Daniel, twelfth chapter, verses nine and ten.
And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed yes. until the time of the end. Yes. Many shall be purified and made white. They're going to go through this stuff. Mm -hmm. What words? Scripture? Mm -hmm. What words? Scripture? Uh, yeah. The prophecy that Daniel received from the angel. Okay. Many shall be purified and made white, trying. The wicked, but the wicked, those under the judgment shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. You're going to know before it happens how to deal with it. Just to Jesus. Jesus was never caught in a situation right. that he couldn't handle. Caught off guard. Because the Spirit let him know exactly before it happened what was going to happen and what he needed to do. Amen. Mr. Jones, uh, last night, I didn't sleep last night. Because this is so strong on my heart and on my mind, and I'm going to speak it out today, right now. Mm -hmm. So, Father the, Jonesy, the, uh, the scripture says, Will a man rob God? Okay? Mm -hmm. So now you've robbed me of tithes and offerings, is what the scripture says. If you bring that in, I will rebuke the devourer. You are under a curse. Mm -hmm. So, those of us who can pay our tithes and offerings and choose not to, what is the best they can expect? Will they make it to heaven or will they immediately go under judgment when the Lord's voice is uttered? They're gonna have an understanding of uh, a rough situation when this goes down and why. Everybody who has not measured up is gonna be made known what it is. They won't be able to rationalize, compromise, or do anything else. Whether religious, political, social, whoever. It's going to be a level playing field before destruction falls. So let me ask you this, Mr. Jones. If indeed you can pay your tithes and offerings and you choose not to, how does that affect your entrance into heaven? You don't have one. It doesn't happen, right? 